Hello, my dear friends. Today we are going to enter the mystical world of ray casting. Or rather, we are just going to throw away the traditional way of doing ray casting in Unity, which is using the physics ray cast function. Instead, we are going to do something better than that, something that scales in terms of performance. What am I talking about? I'm talking about, yes, teaching the physics raycast function and going instead for the commands or the raycast commands. Let's start with a simple exercise. Have you ever played a first person shooter? Of course you have. I mean, who hasn't played Half-Life or who hasn't played any of its mods? I don't know, like Counter-Strike or Team Fortress. One or two. I love these games. If you have played any of them, you know that you have something called crosshair. And this crosshair tells you whether the thing you are pointing at is a good boy or a bad boy. Now, who are these people that I have on the screen? Are they good boys or are they bad boys? There are many ways to tell that in Unity, for example, we can do this through the tags. Here I have someone tagged as player and here I have someone else called enemy with the tag enemy. I wonder what can they be? So to cut with the chit chat, if I hit the play button, you will see that this crosshair Actually, let me zoom a bit, just in case you don't see it, like this will do. You will see this crosshair in green to show you that this is a friendly character. And if we point somewhere else, it's going to be white. And if we point at this suspicious enemy, it's right! All right, so how do we do this in C Sharp? How do we do this in Unity? Well, one way to do this is by using raycasts. Raycasting is nothing else than this is a ray that I'm going to shoot from an origin with a direction, okay? So if someone is pointing at me like this and shoots the raycast, it's going to headshot the person or class who shot this raycast is going to receive the information that it is touching me, okay? And this me, myself, could be a player or an enemy in this case. And therefore, once you have this information, you can change the color of your crosshair, either to green, to red, pink, black, white, wherever you want. Now, how do I do this the traditional way in Unity, aka the slow way, the way you shouldn't do. This is the way I decided to do this as an example. Let's call in the fit. Wait, this is annoying. Now much better. Now by calling just the f traditional physics raycast function, right? I just need to tell the API from which origin I want to uh, shoot this raycast, for example, from here and the direction. In this case, it could be, for example, pointing me at the eye, okay? For a headshot, right? So this is the second parameter, the direction. And the third parameter in this case will be the information about the raycast hit that we hit, right? For example, it would be me. And it contains information about me and the distance and the color that it hit and all of this, right? Now, I want to update the color of the crosser. I'm going to do it in a very cheap way, which is changing the material stuff, okay? Do not worry about that. What I'm going to do is to check first if we collide it against something or someone, in this case, me. I'm going to check if this me, the collider, has a tag called player or an enemy. And depending on the tag that it has, something that you can see here on the tag side of Unity, we're just going to change the color of the crosser. Now, is this good or is this a bad way to do this? It is a bad way because this is the traditional raycasting API, which is pretty slow. It is not very slow per se, but it is running on the main thread and it's going to block the entire execution of your game loop. And this is something that your players don't like because you are running their experience. You're making them 
run uh, your, the game much slower. Right? So for example, if I hit the play button, we should probably see that this behavior is somewhere around here in the timeline. Maybe somewhere around here, crosshair update, okay? Here it is. We are doing this raycast in the main thread. And this does not scale. This could be the difference between staying as a junior developer or getting promoted to senior developer. Now, how do we do this better? We do this better by getting into the ship of raycast commands, the new era of raycasting. Ooh, let's get to this. Now, how do I update this code to use Raycast commands? First, we need to know what a Raycast command is. Let's talk about that. A Raycast command is nothing else than doing the same thing, only that we do this in the background thread or in a job. Right? We don't do this in the main thread. We do not block the execution of the game loop because we don't want to bother the players, right? We care about them. So because of this, we need to prepare the execution of this raycast so that it is executed somewhere around uh, the frame, right? Later on the thread. And we also need to receive the output of this at some point whenever this is done. Okay, so let's do this in parts. First, we need to know what API do we need to talk with. Right? In this case, it is called raycast command. And then the function is schedule patch. It is not that we have many other functions to talk about, right? So if we do this, at least in Rider, you get information about the types, of the parameters that this function expects. So for now, I'm just going to take the defaults, right? Uh -huh. uh, for example, yeah, sure. And then uh, let's say one. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what these parameters means. The first thing is that when we want to schedule a raycast to be executed in uh, another thread, we need to pass exactly the command right, the requests, the information about, you know, where to start, where to point at, uh, the distance, and all of this. And we do this through the raycast command, right? So the thing is that it usually doesn't pay off too much to do this in just one batch. That's why Unity allows you to create more of these commands to be executed in the background, right? In this case, we are only interested in just one raycast. That is why we're going to create a native array uh, of commands of just length one, okay? And then we are going to ask Unity to create this in persistent memory because we are going to do this in every frame. So I am, of course, going to create a variable for this so we don't have to do this every frame. And I'm going to call this recast commands. Right? And this is going to happen on awake. Oh, thank you, right there. I'm going to call this request commands. I'm going to create a variable for this. And not a local one. Thank you very much, Riders. You are very kind. I'm going to create it here. Good. So now we have the first part of our schedule batch parameter. But of course, this is just an array. We need to tell a Unity, hey, Here's the meat, right? We need to actually create one command for this array. For this, you know, we're just going to create uh, one element, which is going to look quite much like what we had before, right? So again, origin and direction. That's it. That's the first part of the schedule batch call, which is to tell Unity which kind of recasts we want to create, right? We want to shoot. The second part is actually an array to receive the output, right? To receive the information about what we hit, whether we hit something or not. For this, again, we need an array, but it's going to be raycast hit. And of course, we're going to call this raycast hits. Amazing naming convention. So here we are. So we have here the raycast hits, which is what I'm going to pass as the second parameter. And there it is. Now we have the schedule batch call 
complex. Good. This is nice because this is the way we schedule a recast to be executed on the worker thread. That means that we don't have access to the result yet because it's going to be executed later at some point. So what do we need to do? First, we need to know what is the status of this uh, recast job that we are submitting. And that's why this function returns something called a job handle. Right? So basically, I'm just going to assign it to this variable that does not yet exist, but I'm going to create it. Uh, create field job handle, much better. And this job handle, again, is going to track the status of this raycast that is being executed on a worker thread. All right, so let's assume that we are at frame 1000 and we are just starting this frame. What do we need to do? We need to take the result of this raycast that we probably scheduled one frame earlier, right? One frame before. How do we do this? We tell the job handle, hey, complete whatever you were working on. So you can see here that we scheduled something. Good. Uh, this was, for example, in frame uh, five, right? And then on frame six, we are going to tell Unity, hey, if you didn't finish doing the calculations for this raycast that I'm doing here, please finish them now. So in other words, we're going to potentially block the main thread till this raycast is complete. Now, this usually does not happen because Unity will have completed it, this, you know, this raycast command before this complete is executed, right? It had a lot of time during the previous run to do it, but just in case we do this, right? Now, here in this line of code, we know that the raycast is completed. So what do we do? Well, what we do is our usual raycast handling, right? We handle the result. Where is the result? Well, here in the output of the schedule patch, right? It is the raycast hits. We know that we are expecting only one result, right? So uh, we just need to get the raycast hit. Uh, let's call this raycast hit. That is in the list raycast hits at position zero, right? Conflicting variable is defined below. Ah, here you are. You tricked me. All right. You don't exist anymore. Goodbye. Thank you. Have a nice day. Now, this is the recast hit that we care about because this is completed, right? By the time that we reach this point. And uh, the only thing we need to check to see if it hit something is to check if the collider is null, right? Or not. Additionally, you can also check if the distance is greater than zero. Okay. And that is it. Okay. So the first thing that we do here is to complete the raycast that was being executed during the last frame. Okay. Then second, we get the raycast hit and change the cursor color. And third, we schedule a new raycast to be executed in a worker thread. Not thread, job. This frame. Now, if I didn't mess up something, which I did, because when you work with job handles and lists, what you need to know is to dispose this stuff, okay? Basically, I need to go to this native list and call dispose. We also go to the raycast hit uh, array, list array, and dispose, dispose, dispose. And then uh, finally, uh, to be sure that we do not dispose while this is being completed, we just call complete beforehand. If I didn't mess up anything, this should work. Do not look at my secret stuff. And I'm going to start Unity. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, it is green. Oh, looks like it's working. Nice, I love it. Now, if we look at the profiler, you will see that the recast is not happening here anymore, right? Of course, we are using the Raycast API, 
uh, or rather the Raycast commands API for this to happen. But the Raycast itself is going to be executed somewhere later down the road. We can probably find it out. For example, here, right? You see the worker number 23, because yes, I spent a lot of money in a good CPU that has tons of cores. The worker number 23 is executing the Raycast job later on, not synchronously, not bothering the user. And by the time that we reach the next frame, the calculations have completed and we have access to the data we wanted. Welcome to the new era in game performance with Raycast commands. Now, before you go, this is not everything because we do not have only Raycasts. We also have checks. We also have overlaps. We also have volumetric ray casting. We have strips. We have tons of cool toys that you need to play with in game development, right? Especially important are, in my opinion, for example, the sphere sweeps or the capsule sweeps, where we check for the same information, but in a volumetric way. We don't check for rates, we check for volumes, which is very important, for example, in visibility checks, in navigation, in AI, in pathfinding, in planning, in locomotion, it is important in many areas of game development, and those become exponentially more expensive than raycasts. So do not use the traditional way of doing this kind of raycasts. Do not use the usual sweeps. You need to upgrade to the commands. So if you are interested in this, if you want to become a professional developer or even become a senior developer, you need to know about all of this. And lucky you, because wow, what a coincidence. I have a full lesson on this on the Unity Performance Task Force. You just need to head on to the week number 20 seconds, I believe, and this is the moment where I explain all of this in detail, right, about the rate casting and volumetric casting and the differences between checks, overlaps and all of these things. And I also show you a few examples, right? So there you have all the information that you might need, right, regarding uh, rate casting. And you can join cheaper than ever because you can just join for a trial. But I don't care because I know that once you join the trial, you will like what you have to see and you will stay for longer to become a professional developer. And of course, you cannot miss the monthly life lessons that we have exclusively for the Task Force members. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think and if you have an experience with this. Talk to you soon.